Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we are doing November Day 3, which is the psychedelic prompt. And I thought, you know, what is more psychedelic than a colorful spiral that also looks a bit ominous and all this. Uh, you might think that it's mainly a material effect, but there's actually quite a bit of uh, geometry nodes going on here, as you can see, and uh, very few shader nodes. So. I want to talk about the algorithm I use to make this, and uh, this is actually useful for a bunch of different results. Um, you might think, how did I generate this? What was the uh, algorithm? Uh, I'll just show you a bit of a preview. Uh, you can see that here we have this kind of pattern generation thing, and using a bunch of geometry nodes and shader nodes magic, we turn this uh, into the final effect uh, that you saw over here. So, let me talk about how to do that, and yeah. By the way, a final project file is going to be available on Patreon and also on Gumroad, link in the description. So, uh, starting off, we take everything, delete it, add in a cube. By the way, if you don't know what November is, watch the other two tutorials. We're doing a prompt every day, 30 days of tutorials. Uh, with this cube, I'm going to make it a Geonodes object as I've done, delete the input, and everything from this point on is going to be procedural. So, uh, to create the uh, curve pattern that I showed you before, the psychedelic looking thing, you might think, oh, that's super complicated, but it's actually surprisingly simple. Here's a trick I learned. Take a mesh circle, take a instance on point nodes. So we want to instance on each point of the circle. What am I going to instance? I'm going to instance itself. You might think that's strange, strange but uh, check this out. It creates this already psychedelic pattern. This is like a way you can make sunflower seed distribution and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and it happens that as you bring up and down the res, you get a bunch of interesting patterns, like a nested pentagram. Uh, you can get the beginning of a triforce or a Sierpinski triangle. And basically what we're doing is we have a circle composed of circles with a uh, arbitrary number of vertices. Okay, I'm going to take this. So that's already like a cool result that just exists, by the way. I should, and this might mess with the recording a bit, hopefully it doesn't. My laptop is not plugged in, which means that it's a bit glitchy. So it might flicker in a second. Let's see what it does. Okay, we're good. Um, what was I saying? Uh, we have a super simple way to generate this kind of psychedelic looking thing, and I want to convert it into a curve and do a bunch of other stuff with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize these instances, turn it into actual geometry, and then I'm going to run a merge by distance. What does this do? It takes points that are overlapping, like there are two points here, um, and it will merge them. So you can see before and after looks the same, but if you look at the number of vertices, uh, that is changing. And that's also dynamic. So I'm going to set this to like 18 vertices, and then take all of this and turn it into a curve. So mesh to curve. What I'm going to do to get this kind of contracting looking thing is we are going to trim the curve, uh, by the way, each one of these segments, since we merge distance, so this line, this line, this line, is all going to be an independent path or an independent curve. So if I do a trim curve operation on all of this, you can see it's doing this kind of contracting thing. I want this to be uh, oscillating and random, so I'm going to set the end point to be a random value uh, between 0 and 1, and I'm going to animate this over time by adding a time input and then sending this through a sign. What this does is it lets us go from uh, negative one to one. By the way, I guess a bit of an issue is you wouldn't want the end point to be smaller than zero. So I'm gonna map negative one to one to zero to one. And you get this kind of pulsating, contracting thing. You can see they're all kind of in sync at the moment. So if you want a bit more randomness, take the zero to one, bump it up to like zero to five. And now you get something that feels kind of you know, deterministic, but also fairly random. I'm going to turn down the count so we can see something a bit more simple. So we're just dynamically changing the endpoint. Another thing we can do to make this more interesting is since this is now a modified curve, uh, we can fillet the curve using a arbitrary number of divisions. So this is going to make our thing bendy. I'm going to limit the radius. And just like before, I'm going to randomize the amount of uh, radius. So you can see it's looking a bit more interesting. Bring this up to something like 16, like we said before, and you get this uh, cool looking result. Now, uh, the way we take this and we send it into our psychedelic render, the way we do this is by sending this information into Shader 
uh, editor and by judging the proximity. So I'm saying take this design and just tell me uh, a way to bring it into the shader editor in an interesting way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with a grid. So I'm just going to merge these, make the grid slightly bigger than this. And what I want to do is on this grid, I want to send the information of which points are close to which parts of this design. So I'm going to bring up our vertex count since we need more geometry to sample, right? And I want to ask again, so this is going to be a bit confusing, but you'll see it in a moment why I'm doing it. I want to ask uh, how close are we to the curve? By the way, uh, geometry proximity only works with meshes, so run a curve to mesh. Uh, so now it's just a dynamic mesh, doesn't really matter. Take this, make it the target, and I'm going to sample either the points or the edges. I think edges make more sense. So each point on the grid is now asking, how close am I uh, to this design? Okay, and I want to send that information. So again, we're only going to be viewing the grid. I'm going to send that information to a named attribute. So distance, I'm going to call this attribute distance. And now we have a way to send this into the shader editor. So I've just created an attribute that says how close are we to this pattern. Uh, to apply this in the shader editor, I'm going to set a material that we can view this with. And now let's see what this looks like. So we have a material. I'm going to call it Psi for psychedelic. And you can see now we have a dynamic material that lets us update the grid. And what I want to do is bring in this attribute that we called distance. So let's see what this looks like. So you can see we've now brought in the pattern into the shader editor. Again, what we've done is actually a bit more than this. We've said, hey, every point on the grid, how close are you uh, to this? So you can see the black lines are exactly overlapping, right? They're a distance of zero. And then we have the zero to one gradient. This gradient is actually very important because if we now sample this through a, uh, a ping pong texture, we can get this repetitive looking design because it's ping ponging between black and white and black and white and black and white. This is useful because if we send it through a hue saturation node, we can vary the hue over time. And let's have a bit more variation. So I'm just going to scale this by five and we get dynamic colors. So as we go from zero to one, we're going across the color spectrum. To make this more dynamic, I'm going to add an addition you can think of as just going across the color spectrum. I'm going to add over time using a driver. So every frame uh, go 1 45th um, of an evolution. And you can see we get this psychedelic looking design. Again, all of this is dependent on our circle made up of circles. So here you can see what's going on a bit more clearly with this uh, Triforce looking thing. You could do the pentagram. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Now the question is, how do we take, so this is kind of the base result, right? How do we take this kind of random deterministic looking thing and turn it into our psychedelic spiral? Basically at this point, we're taking this design and we're just gonna throw a bunch of noise at it. So uh, for this geometry proximity, which is again driving the material, instead of a standard position that it's using to find the nearest uh, point, or really edge, if you set this to a point, you can see it looks slightly different. Um, and this is cool in its own right, but I'm just gonna do edges. Instead of just using raw position, let's uh, vary it up by adding some noise. So I'm going to mix this uh, with linear light. Uh, the reason we do this is this is a way to mix uh, two things. Let me use a noise texture. Two things while keeping it centered. It's just a trick. So we're going to use a noise texture using the position coordinate system. Mix this with our position, and you can see we have our original distorted original, distorted, and it's still going to follow the rules. So you can see we're getting a bit closer. Uh, really what we want to do is make our noise work for us. I want this to be of higher detail, of higher roughness, so it kind of looks like a blurred version of what we had before. So before, after, um, and you can mess with the scale and all this. I'm just going to leave it as is, okay? And uh, to make this look more like a spiral and it's dark and all this, I'm going to send our ping pong function. Again, this is the black and white uh, texture. I'm going to send this to the value. In other words, how bright are these colors? And I'm going to use a multiplication uh, to filter this. 
so we can make it so that all the colors are present or only some of them. And you can see this makes it look much more interesting. So again, uh, we took this uh, input from before and said uh, where it's very dark or where the original ping pong's very black, uh, darken it up a bit. And now it's just a matter of playing with settings. So how many colors do you want there to be in each one? Uh, stuff like this. So I'm gonna bring this up. You know, we could, we could do something fancy with a subtraction to make kind of this gradient. Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, but you, you can see we're darkening this and making it look more uh, interesting. Uh, some other things we can do to make this more dynamic and spinny and all this is our original pattern. Again, remember, it looks like this. I'm going to modify it with a transform. So when we look at this, I could do something like, let's uh, scale it up or down. You can see uh, we're getting different looking things. So if I scale it down, uh, all the interesting stuff happens in the middle, and then around the thing, there's like concentric uh, circles. For the rotation, I can animate it over time. So this thing now rotates. And again, at this point, you're just kind of changing parameters until you get the look that you want. Um, I'm thinking, let's make the background black. Let's also add a bit of bloom to this so it's glowing but not so intensely, just a bit. And I think the last component of this is making it feel more like a spiral. So uh, to do this, I'm just gonna distort again this uh, noise, or not this noise, this position that's being sent to geometry nodes. I'm just gonna rotate it with a vector rotate node. So this is gonna let us rotate the coordinate system that it's sampling which point is the closest. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vary this using a gradient texture. So you can see this already gives us a very interesting result. Set this boy to spherical, which gives us a gradient that increases as we go outwards. It's gonna give us like the length of the position. Uh, do that, feed the position coordinates, and then, so this is just something I found by experimenting. There was no like necessarily like logic to this, right? I'm gonna scale this and I'm going to multiply the angle and you can see as we multiply, we get more of a spiral. So what's happening here is as we go outwards, uh, spherically or radially, whatever you want to call it, I'm multiplying the angle so the twist becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Or maybe it's the other way. It gets weaker and weaker and weaker until it goes to the center. Um, I'm going to add a bit of twist. And I'm also using the scale node to say how big should our spherical gradient be. And this gives us the nice uh, spiral. So I'm just going to play with these settings. Maybe multiply was the way to go. Something like that. Play around with the transform. So you get the look that you want. You could add a stupid amount of color here, get crazy. It is all up to you. There we go. Now I'm getting a look that I want a bit more. So you could play with the ping pong all this. Uh, one thing I want to really emphasize is the number of points here is really going to drive the look of this, right? So we get five, we get eight. As we go up, it kind of looks more and more broken up until you get up to like 50 or something like this. And then it, it creates its own like unique pattern. I'm going to go for like 25 here. And now we're getting pretty close to the result. Uh, other things we can do is shift the amount of randomness. Uh, of the, uh, remember we trimmed the curves originally. Uh, if you set this to zero to one, it will feel much more like together, synchronous. As you increase this to a large number, uh, it will feel more like random. So this is generally how I made the result. Uh, you know, there's a couple technicalities for like um, how I, uh, what numbers I picked specifically. So you can see I'm messing with the sine wave here and all this. Uh, but this is generally how I made the results. So there you go. November day three, psychedelic geometry nodes and shader nodes, all procedural. Um, if you want the blend file, again, it's going to be available on Patreon. I actually have to upload all of those today. And it's also going to be available as a Gumroad thing. So you don't need to make this yourself and you can study the node network that I made. Um, other than that, I want to thank the patrons that are supporting this channel. Uh, if you want to become a patron, you get blend files, exclusive tutorials, etc. 
uh, this is uh, the best way to support the channel and what I do. So if you like what I do, uh, even a dollar helps a ton. Because when you have a lot of people who give a dollar, I can keep making these tutorials for free. So Patreon is the lifeblood, the lifeline of this uh, channel. So I appreciate all the active patrons, 700 some, and the people that are going to join. Uh, other than that, that is the show. And thank you for watching.